I brought together the incident to the group with ministers and CDA. We continue to work closely with municipalities, provinces to deal with the blockages. I also share the most recent developments with other party leaders. I insisted that MPs of all parties denounce the illegal acts. On Wednesday, I spoke with Premier Ford and yesterday with Mayor Drew Dilkins of Windsor to offer the full and continued support of the federal government. Minister Al Gabra, as well as Ministers Blair, Mendicino and Leblanc, are also in regular contact with their counterparts. Ontario's announcement this morning is responsible and necessary. We will continue working alongside all partners to get the situation under control. This morning, I had a direct call with President Biden to talk about our shared challenges at the border. I updated him on the situation, particularly in Windsor. We discussed the American and indeed global influences on the protest. We talked about the U.S.-based flooding of the 911 phone lines in Ottawa, the presence of U.S. citizens in the blockades, and the impact of foreign money to fund this illegal activity. President Biden and I both agree that for the security of people and the economy, these blockades cannot continue. So make no mistake, the border cannot and will not remain closed. I want to remind everyone that politicians don't direct police in a democratic society, but I can assure you that the RCMP is working with provincial and local police departments to enforce the law. Everything is on the table because this unlawful activity has to end and it will end. Of course, I can't say too much more now as to exactly when or how this ends because unfortunately we are concerned about violence. So we're taking every precaution to keep people safe. But the absolute safest way for this to end is for everyone to return to your communities now. If you're still participating in illegal blockades, you're hurting your neighbors. So it's time to go home, especially if you have kids with you. In recent weeks, we saw that funds were brought up to from, uh, from foreign countries to support these blockades. It's important to understand that these funds cannot sustain or support illegal activity. are governed by laws, regulations, and practices that ensure funds cannot be used for criminal act or illegal activity, and these blockades are illegal. Canadian banks are monitoring financial activity very closely and taking action as necessary. I want to make something very clear. The illegal blockades seeking to take our neighbourhoods and our economy hostage and the collective COVID fatigue we are facing are two very separate things. If you joined the protests because you're tired of COVID, you now need to understand that you are breaking laws. The consequences are becoming more and more severe. You don't end up losing your license, end up with a criminal record, which will impact your job, your livelihood, even your ability to travel internationally, including to the U.S. We've heard your frustration with COVID, with the measures that are there to keep people safe. We've heard you. It's time to go home now. And to the people who are tired of this pandemic, that is, all Canadians, I want you to be able to get back to the things that you love. I hear you, all of you. Parliamentarians hear it in their communities. We all hear it from friends and family. From people like Lori from here in Ontario who wrote to me to say she disagrees with the bad behaviour of the blockaders, but she's also tired of the restrictions. Or Helen from Toronto, 
who's worried about what the restrictions are doing to children's mental health. I understand. We don't want these measures to last longer than they should. And we never did. But the truth is, because of all of our efforts, we saved more lives in Canada than in many other countries. We helped people like Samuel from Courtney, B.C., who also wrote to tell me that as a health care worker, our measures are keeping him safe. C'est parce qu'on a travaillé ensemble. It's because we worked together and that we got vaccinated that we got back more than a million jobs. We asked people to get vaccinated specifically because we want to avoid isolation and restrictions. And that's what Canadians did. As we look forward, we continue to work with public health authorities and to follow the best scientific advice to keep people safe and to protect health care workers. Every day, we consider and reconsider what's possible and what's best to protect Canadians. I have multiple meetings every week to talk about what the next step are. And this morning, for example, I spoke with Dr. Tam and Minister Duclos, among others, about the plan to adjust travel measures under federal jurisdiction. As Canadians, it's important to continue being there for one another. We're fighting a virus. We're not fighting each other. People are making sacrifices and have been for the past two years. It's never the time to hurt our economy and fellow Canadians with illegal blockades, but especially not now. After all we've sacrificed together, after all we've done, 